In this tutorial, we're going to look at a method for making sort of growing bubble or droplet of water or something. Imagine a bubble coming out of a straw and then being turned into a dynamic object that can collide and react to forces in the world. So um, there are a couple of little tricks you have to do to make this working and it could be a little bit finicky, but um, Let's give it a shot. So we'll create a new scene here. And <clears throat> give ourselves some more frames. So this will be a combination of blend shapes and end cloth. And uh, let's just start with a cube and we'll smooth this a couple of times. We're going to start with it sort of in its big shape here. So the shape when it's grown. And we'll delete its history and freeze its transformations. And we can select the object and go to Windows, Animation Editors, Shape Editor. And we'll create a blend shape and we'll right click, add a target. And so it's in edit mode already. So if we just select all the vertices and shrink them down, and don't forget for blend shapes, you have to act on the shape node, not the transformation node. So then we'll have something like this. So we're going to actually animate this in reverse, starting small and getting bigger. Make it bigger, and then I will turn this into an end cloth. And cloth, create and cloth. Just at the defaults, and so by default it'll fall down. But we will go into the nucleus node and change the gravity direction to positive one in Y, rather than negative one. Okay, so then we'll get something like this, but we want to have it grow first, right? So if we start like this, it will do the same thing. But we will set keys on this blend shape. Key it. So you'll notice that it doesn't actually change shape. That's because we have to use uh, input mesh attract. And we also have to do something with its um, with its rest shape. So let's just take a look. So if we go into the end cloth, I'm going to set the preset to t-shirt. It's probably just off screen, so let me move this over for you for a second. Set the preset to t-shirt. And then I'm going to change a couple of things here. The pressure, I'm just going to add some internal pressure. And then we want to go into the input mesh attract here. And we want it to be listening to the mesh at first. So when this is turned on, then you can see the blend shape comes into effect. So one thing I'm going to do now is go to um, end cloth rest shape, connect input, input mesh to rest shape. Okay, so now it's listening to the input mesh because we have this set to one. And we'll say just before it finishes growing, we'll start going down to zero in the input mesh attract, and we'll just set keys on that. And then it'll start to go up, right? So this is a uh, an end cloth, so let's make something sort of like a straw. 
to allow it to bump into. And this will take a little bit of fooling around with to get it to work. I'm just going to delete the top faces and the bottom faces just so it's more like a straw. And we'll just rotate this into position. Let's go back to the start so we know where it is. Oops. <laughs> so as this thing grows, you can see it's going to intersect with this. So we, we can make this a collision object and that can help solve some of it. So let me just delete the history and freeze transformations and we will turn this straw into a passive collider. So if we play it now, you can see we run into some problems where because the input mesh attract is um, sort of superseding that um, collision, it's going straight through. So we can just animate this um, bubble moving from the beginning. So there might be a different way to do this, but I'm just going to, over these 40 frames, animate it going down a little bit. And this will take a little bit of trial and error. Yeah, so it's got to move a little faster than that. So one thing you can do is go into uh, NCloth Display Input Mesh. So we can see the input mesh changing over time. It grows a lot, I can see. So um, maybe we have to move this down quite a bit more. Then go back to NCloth Display Current Mesh. Right, so you can see that it's colliding with that. And if we just put a plane on top, turn this into a passive collider. Again, something like this. So to make this more or less like a bubble, you can go into the uh, the settings of the end cloth and change things. You know, we can increase the pressure settings, see what this does. Not sure how notices, noticeable this will be. Looks exactly the same to me, <laughs> I think. Three. Um, we can increase things like the rigidity and deform resistance, the compression resistance. Let's just put that to 35 as well. Let's just see. Right, so we can do something like that. And don't forget that you can always go into the scale attributes here in the nucleus node and change it to a different value according to the scale of your scene to act more or less like a smaller or a larger object. So now it's acting like a, a much larger object. Maybe that's what we want. Back to one. So the key here is, uh, and the thing that I missed for a long time, um, is not the input mesh and the blend shape. So that's pretty easy. You're just, input mesh allows you to have this object sometimes follow what the input mesh is like and therefore it can listen to the blend shapes and then sometimes just react entirely or partly to the dynamics in the scene. The thing 
if you find that your object is shrinking back down to the original size of the uh, the blend shape uh, when it's in its shrunken form, then the thing to solve that is to go to end cloth rest shape and say connect input mesh to rest shape. So when it the blend shape grows it to this shape, it will stay at that shape. Um, that took me forever to figure out. <laughs> it's probably obvious to others. But that is about it. And you could always try end constraints to, you know, link it to the end of the to the end of the straw. You can throw a new material on here. AI standard surface, make it a bubble. Default. Put a light in here. Let's map a file into the as an HDR image. Let's find a nice outdoor one. All right, so now if we render this, get a nice bubble, and if we play the animation, That looks pretty good. All right, so not that hard. It took me forever to figure out, but hopefully this is helpful to some of you out there. Thanks.